G'day viewers, um, my name's Paul and I live in uh, Coolum on the Sunshine Coast and I've made this little video to share my experiences with, uh, with shingles. It's a, a disease uh, often called uh, herpes zoster. Um, it starts off uh, as a virus from the chicken pox stage which most people get when they're children but develops uh, again in a new form as shingles uh, as your immune system uh, is compromised or diminishes later in life with old age and, and, and it can uh, be diminished by things like uh, diabetes or stress or so forth and uh, so this video is not entertainment it's just to share an experience of someone else who's been through shingles uh, and he might find some answers in other people's uh, travels. Um, so I don't want to bore you, I'm just there to share uh, what I found to be useful to cope with the, the pain and the inconvenience of shingles. I've had uh, shingles now for over five weeks, five and a half weeks, uh, and there does not seem to be any clear uh, sign that uh, it's, it's going to be diminishing shortly. It started out as a, as a pain around my right eye uh, on the 21st of October uh, and I woke up uh, that morning uh, with this incredible headache. I don't normally get a headache but I got this incredible headache around the eye and so uh, I thought well I'm going to film every day for a little while to see if it, what develops out of it. At first I didn't know what it was, I, it could have been a brain tumour or a stroke or something but I didn't know what it was that was causing this incredible pain. So I thought, well, I'll take a little video footage every day as it progresses, and if there is a sign of anything happening, uh, I'll get the record on camera. Well, it surely was a, a good idea because within three days, the, the rash came out around the BI area. And as you'll see from the photographs in a minute, that it developed and went up my up and over right up to the top of my scalp. Um, so this is a, a common location for a shingle attack on people in in a, in a quarter of the the skull, uh, and uh, another one is of course the other quarter, or you can get it down your neck. You can get it around your waist. A lot of people get a band of uh, shingle um, blisters or uh, lesions around their waist. I've heard of a lady who got it on her leg. So wherever, wherever it, it attacks the nerves, it, it then leaves this incredible pain. And uh, you, wonder, you wonder where it's coming from, because there's no immediate physical sign on the exterior part of the body. However, the, the pustules did come out, and as you'll see shortly, they, they spread up onto my skull. Now, I've been finding out there are many different phases of shingles. The first one, of course, was the incredible headache. Uh, then there's the then there's the pussy development of these lesions, uh, which are very painful in themselves, but also look very ugly and they are very contagious. Whilst you're in this stage of uh, a shingle disease, you are quite uh, able to pass the disease on to others um, who. You can't pass, if they haven't had chicken pox, you can't pass shingles on. But if they haven't had chicken pox, you can pass chicken pox on to people. So you shouldn't go near children or, or other people who have not had chicken pox or been immunised against chicken pox. So once the um, pustules come out, I found coping with the light an extreme problem. So I had to draw the curtains in the house and, and keep in a, in a relatively cool, dark place. Uh, and just weighed out the pain and uh, it was even difficult to watch TV sometimes because of the bright lights coming off the television. So I've, I've been able to do a little bit of exercise at night after dark when the sun's gone down to go out and take the dog for a walk. Um, so you need to try and keep yourself a little bit fit. So we, we handled the, uh, when the first came out I went straight to the doctor, the quicker you can get to the doctor uh, once you think you've got shingles, the better, because early intervention is, is vital to stop the spread of this disease over your body. So I went to the doctor and he put me straight on to an antiviral uh, medication called Femcyclovir. Uh, and uh, that managed to clear up 
the, the pustules and the, the disease on the skin cleared up within about 10 days. Uh, but then it moved into a, into a new phase uh, called a post herpetic, um, what's it called here? Post herpetic neuralgia. Uh, a very serious uh, phase of the disease. When it first struck me, I, I thought I was going to die. I was woken in the middle of the night with a very hot, burning sensation right in the centre of my eye. It felt like someone was trying to dig my eye out with a hot poker. I didn't know where it was coming from or how long it was going to last. I was panicking. I just screamed with pain and probably woke all the neighbours um, and, and didn't know how to, what to do to alleviate it. So eventually, after about five or six minutes, this pain subsided and I took, I, I downed a few uh, Panamax and some Endome, some painkillers and eventually was able to go back to sleep. But that was a horrendous experience. And I went on to have about uh, 20, 23 of these attacks in the next 10 days. So two to three attacks a day. And you never knew when they were coming. They were generally about eight hours apart. And it just hit you like a, a train crash. Just an incredible bang. It, it comes on so suddenly you've got about three seconds to reposition yourself. And I discovered that getting a, an ice pack or a cold uh, flannel or a cl cl cold um, cloth put on the, the infected area and put pressure on, physical pressure on with cold pack, uh, helped to uh, contain the pain from these dreadful uh, attacks that come in the post uh, herpetic neuralgic stage. Um, eventually uh, moved on to uh, uh, different sorts of drugs to find to tr one get the one drug that will stop the pain from exploding like that every eight hours or so and uh, we think we might have found it in uh, gabatine um, is the medicine that eventually uh, I've been using to stop this rapid explosion of pain from the post neuralgia my doctors also put me on the uh, uh, NDEP, which is am amitriptyline, um, a couple of those every day. They're more relaxant and, and, and calm you down um, because there's a lot of stress involved in the pain attacks that come with shingles. Now, of course, one of the uh, benefits of being uh, on the internet, if you're on the internet, which you would be if you're watching this, uh, is that you can go and research it. And uh, the incredible amount of information out there, there's, there's a lot of mythology. Um, but you need to sort out what you think is the, the best for you. I discovered that in America they do have a, a, a vaccine um, for shingles. For those people who are over 50 years of age, they get it free. Uh, if you're under 50 years of age, or not in America, it's going to cost you about $220 Australian. So I'm looking into that to try to get some, a vaccine for my wife because I don't want her to go through this pain that I'm going through. Uh, so I don't know where we're at in Australia in terms of getting this uh, vaccine, but I uh, would encourage anyone that has any say in it to go ahead with it and get it, get people covered, because it's a dreadful, dreadful disease to have, and it takes so much out of you uh, and and out of your life. Um, I've just been totally slowed down, unable to go anywhere, unable to drive my car because I've got a double vision and uh, just it's a terrible situation not being able to even drive down to the shop to pick up the mail or to get some uh, groceries. Now one of the things that uh, I've discovered when you're taking a lot of painkillers uh, that it does affect your bowels and also when you're not exercising, uh, not drinking enough water uh, and if your bowels aren't working then you're in big big trouble. Um, so part of the treatment process is to really look after your bowels, take one of those, uh, a new lax is a, is a sort of a laxative made out of fruit, uh, that's one. Mucil. Metamucil is another one I take. Fibre. It adds fibre into the bowel system so you can, you can get a decent bowel movement every day uh, if possible. Um, now there's a lot of uh, a lot of fear associated with it because when you're, when you're hit with so much pain you, you, and you don't know where, where it's coming from or when it's coming, there is a lot of fear involved, so uh, you need to have good supports around you if you can. 
um, and relax and try to try to keep yourself calm if you can otherwise you're going to raise the stress level and eventually you'll get one of these explosions take place in the pain area of where all the nerves fire off uh, around the, the damaged uh, area from the shingles so keep yourself calm don't get too excited don't go jumping up and down too much because it could bring on an attack it's, it's a disease that really slows you down and uh, makes you very very cautious uh, with what you're going to be doing and don't be afraid to ask your priest or your pastor or your friends or your supporters uh, for prayer as well because the, the prayers of a righteous man availeth much and if you've got a righteous man here you ask him to pray for you because his prayers are able to avail much are able to do much for you <laughs> now we know sickness is uh, not of God it's a dreadful thing to have a sickness like this it's a curse on the, on the human body and uh, you want to you know if you have any faith at all then reach out to God cry out to God and ask him to help you and, and to support you uh, it'll be a, a great day when I can say I am healed from this disease because at the moment it's uh, really holding me back five five and a half weeks without being able to get out and about and uh, without being able to do much so i pray out to god that he will uh, heal me and restore me and, and give me a new lease of life after this uh, chapter which is at all not at all a pleasant one With my uh, shingles being located around the eye, uh, I've had to be very careful to prevent the disease getting into the eye because shingles actually can cause blindness. It can cause deafness. I've had some ear aches associated with mine. Uh, so you really need to be careful to try to protect the, the organs and, and the eye in particular. And there is a drop, an eye drop that I got from the ophthalmologist to put in my drop in my eye three or four times a day to try to prevent blindness. Um, a, a dreadful consequence that would be if you came out blind. The other thing is, of course, when I said get support, tell your friends, tell your family, uh, and, and um, when you, especially when you pass the um, contagious stage, and that is when all the, when all the pus, puscules or the little um, blisters have healed up and there's scar tissue nice and tight and sealed on your head or on your body, then you're not contagious and you need to tell your friends you're not contagious now and, and it would be nice if they could visit or support you because it's a regular day by day experience and you need to have someone contacting you every day to check on you to make sure that you're okay and that you're up and about and doing you know, things that you normally would like to do. So if I could just give a little brief summary I've had shingles for about five and a half weeks I've still got them it's still progressing uh, but it seemed to have gone through several stages. The first uh, stage uh, was a pre-blister stage where I got acute headache around the eye for two to three days and on the fourth day uh, the blisters started to appear and formed little pustules uh, following the cranial nerve line uh, where the virus had attacked. And that lasted about 10 to 14 days before it was completely healed up with a, an antiviral medication. But then came what I consider to be the worst and uh, the, probably the most debilitating stage, the post-herpetic uh, neuralgia stage. Um, this uh, started uh, spontaneously uh, one night, in the middle of the night woke me up and, and uh, and it did that 23 times in the next 10 days. It was just a huge attack, a bit like a, an epileptic attack or something like that. You could do nothing about it. You could do, provide no painkiller to relieve it. You just had to hang on and grit your teeth or something like that until the pain passed. And fortunately, it did pass within uh, five minutes on each occasion. And then I was totally wrecked and wiped out uh, for the next few hours. So that's uh, the in the post um, herpetic neur neuralgia stage uh, where you get these uh, paroxysmal attacks uh, fortunately uh, they have now subsided possibly with the help of the that gabapentin uh, medication not quite sure what's helping it or whether it's natural healing of the nerve 
uh, fibres themselves. So it's difficult to pinpoint exactly what is causing the healing, but it's certainly a relief not to have them on a daily basis two or three times because it does put you on tenterhooks and you're very uh, nervous and anxious, uh, waiting, wondering when the next attack is going to strike you. So that's a summary. I'm, I'm now going to close off this uh, broadcast and uh, we'll be back again with a further edition when I'm able to report on a, a total healing, which I'm expecting sometime in the next few days or weeks or months, I'm not sure. Some people have gone on with this uh, disease for years. Some people have never been healed. Some people get healed within six months or even two or three months. So, so I'll give you a further report as things develop in the next week or two.